So, um, what next for Chris Eubank Jr.? Um, you know, I don't really hold back on this show. I'm not one to sit on fences. I'm not one to um, not say what's really on my mind. The truth is, I don't know what he does next. Um, he has got big decisions to do. Because, can I... Look, he's not very good, is he? He's not very good. Um, does he look fantastic? Does he hit that boxing bag thing fantastic? Absolutely. But for someone that is so arrogant, he's not that good. He just isn't. Um, and I think when we see him step up against good fighters, it's clearly obvious he's not at their level. I mean, Billy Joe Saunders' fight, Billy Joe Saunders, for the first six, seven rounds, made it look easy. And he just ran out of gas. Um, George Groves tonight made it look pretty easy as well. Uh, apart from the time, apart from the last minute of round 12 when he popped his shoulder and was fighting one-handed, it looked pretty damn easy. So you look at it. Let's go at 168. 168 in terms of what's next. Um, boy, James DeGill. James DeGill beats him. Let's, let's be very honest. James the Girl beats him, and James the Girl beats him quite comfortably as well. I know James the Girl didn't look good in his last outing, but James the Girl, fit, firing, and all cylinders, again, is just too big for him and too good a boxer. James the Girl is an Olympic gold medalist, too good a boxer, and will just beat him on the back foot pretty easily. Um, the other 168s in America, forget it, too big. Um, you look at the 160s, oh my God, it's a minefield. Charlo beats him. Um, GGG smashes him to pieces. Billy Joe Saunders, after that performance against David Lemieux, too confident, beats him. Um, who else is around one? Um, Canelo beats him. Y you have to say, he has got decisions to make. And for me, he's got to get in there with someone, a trainer, that can work on all those holes. Because believe you me, there are so many holes, it's scary. I could do a breakdown video of all the holes, and I wouldn't have enough time to record. There are too many holes in his boxing game. I mean, that that swing in left, the foot movement, everything is just disgraceful. The uppercut is so telegraphed, you might as well write a letter to bloody anyone that he's fighting saying an uppercut's coming in five seconds. Because the uppercut's just so obvious. There are too many holes. And maybe you have to applaud him that he's, he's done so well getting this far and earning which is probably a few million quid in the bank for doing this. But for me, he needs a proper, proper boxing trainer. And, I mean, if he has to take himself off to America to be with someone like, I don't know, Virgil Hunter, then then so be it. I think there are good trainers over here. Um, but there's the problem for him is that in both divisions right now, it's danger. In both divisions, it's danger. And the funny thing is, his natural division, 160, is full of danger. 168, where he went up to, when you look at around, there's not much there. You look at Ramirez, the Gill, um, George Groves, Smith, there's, there's not much there. So it was a smart move. 160, oh my God. So I really don't know what he does next. But one thing that is clear that he needs to do next is get rid of his father. Look, Eubank Senior, well done. You steered him in the right direction. You steered him to good title fights. But in terms of you being the, the motivator in the corner, fuck it. No chance. Ronnie Davis, look, great trainer 20 years ago. Shit's moved on from now. Get rid of everything in that corner and just figure out what you want to do in your life. Because right now, my friend, every time you step up to elite level, you're going to get beaten up.